In the beginning, the earth was without form and void. The sun shone upon the sleeping earth. Into this swirling maelstrom of fire, air and water, the first stirrings of life appeared. The seeds of life grew and strengthened, spread and diversified. Now, it required but one more ingredient. A great leader. To unite the quarreling tribes, to harness the power of the land, to build a legacy that would stand the test of time. A civilization. Civilization franchise has been around for 25 years. So, uh, the video you just saw gave you a little bit of a retrospective on some of those previous titles. Uh, but this installment is going to really, really excite people. What we have done is we have taken a lot of the um, previous content was you build cities and everything went into your cities and you just built them up over time, but they were all within one tile on the map. And now we've made a lot of gameplay decisions uh, where the player has to figure out how to lay out everything around their city and the cities are what we call unstacked. And so now we have districts that are points of specialization for your city outside. Um, they might be in a certain part of the map where it's particularly favorable for that type of activity. So we have science districts uh, near rainforests because there's so much life and different types of species that can be studied there. And it's just unlocked a whole new side of the game for the builder player. And we think that's, um, you know, really, really exciting direction for our series. If nothing else, it's going to add a little bit of anxiety on how to spend that land because land can get pretty valuable as the game goes on. Absolutely, and you're going to want to stake your claim in quite a bit of land initially just so you have all those different things that you can work with. You have access to land that's great, you know, fertile for farmland and, and mining um, and quarry locations so you can get an industrial base going. But the more, it's always true in any kind of forex game like Civilization, that the more you push and try to extend your empire, the more conflict you run into. So there are a lot of really tricky decisions that you're going to have to work your way through to figure out how far do I push? When is this uh, leader going to you know, come down on me with an army or, or what can I get away with right now? We've done two major things to the way you progress through the game. The first of it uh, was that we have taken what used to be just a science-based technology tree, and we've actually split that in two. And now you have two trees that you're progressing on in parallel. One is the same science technology tree, but there's a culture tree as well, and that drives our new civics and uh, government system. And so now, if, you, if you're a one-sided civ that only is emphasizing science, there are gonna be some areas where uh, you can't compete with the other civilizations, wonders that you're shut out from getting because they're unlocking on the culture side of the game. And then the other thing, what you're alluding to was the active research system. That actually is a way to sort of uh, turbocharge your progress in either the culture tree or the science tree by sending your units um, out into the world, having them undertake activities like conquering some barbarians or finding things out in the world. And the more those um, like little miniature quests that you can solve, the more boosts you're going to get. Uh, and what we really, really like about that system is it's a, a reward for playing the game a certain way. So if you're really good at taking out barbarians and, and you build up a strong military right away, you're going to get the boosts on that side of the technology tree and that part of the technology tree will come uh, more easily for your civilization, and that just sort of makes natural sense. If you're a civilization that hasn't even, you're in the middle of a continent, you haven't even found the coast, it's gonna be really hard for you to do something like research sailing and get navigation going, those kind of things, because you don't have any experience with it. So it just is one of those changes that we made that just makes a lot of sense. And we're like, wow, this just feels really good. It feels very natural, but it's all tied in with the gameplay and what you're doing on the map. and, and then. That's exactly the kind of experience we want. We have it set up so that every leader in the game has what we call a historical agenda. And we look at what happened um, historically when they ran their empire and build that into the way sort of they go about playing a civilization game. So our bull moose, Teddy Roosevelt, he's famous for his big stick policy. And 
that form of diplomacy was build a strong army or navy and make sure everyone knows that you have it. Don't necessarily use it, but just make sure that that's a factor in diplomacy and everyone is going to see that and, and maybe think twice before um, questioning you, what you're doing, especially they're not gonna challenge you like right around your homeland in your home continent. And so that's exactly how America plays the game. Beside these historical agendas, each leader also has a hidden agenda that we secretly implant with them at the beginning of the game. And it's through contact with that civilization, through traders and diplomatic delegations, and maybe spies later on in the game, that you start to unlock the information about what their hidden agenda might be. And you'll start to see, well, I, I'm, I'm understanding why he's making this decision because I know what his agendas are. Maybe I can manipulate that. <laughs> There's lots of fun manipulations you can have with the game. Um, Cleopatra has a different historical agenda. Uh, we call that one Queen of the Nile, but what it, what it so involves is the fact that she liked to make alliances with very, very strong leaders. She's known for um, being closely associated with Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony. And that was her way of protecting Egypt back then was to basically to seduce the m most powerful military leaders present in her world and make sure that they were her friends and allies. And if we do that, you know, she, she's going to keep Egypt safe. And that's exactly how she plays the Civilization um, Six game. If you build a weak military, she won't respect you. You know, if, if you only have one or two troops and she's not going to be very friendly to you, she'll, you know, be standoffish and, and, and maybe even decide that you're a good target for her. Here's hoping there's a return of Warlord Gandhi because he was my favorite in Civ Five. Always attacked me whenever I was weak. It is the nature of humankind to push itself toward the horizon. We test our limits. We face our fears. We rise to the challenge and become something greater than ourselves. A civilization.